Coming all the way back. We'll take a moment to connect with our intention. So, so deep, full breath in and out, clear out the body. Nice exhale, release. So starting to connect with our intention, the idea for today that I was playing with is we're getting close to the end of the year for 2023. And so the idea is clearing out 2023. So often we get obsessed with creation and new things and starting things, but we don't take the time to clear stuff off of our plate. So it, it just becomes too much. And that's where I think a lot of goals are lost after just a couple of weeks into the new year. So right now we're clearing out the old. So that might look like some of the energy that happened maybe this year. Maybe there's stories like different deaths that were really hard on us or, you know, craziness that we're ready to, to get to the next step, the next page of our story. Or maybe it's um, even just things that we decided that are, we're not interested, clearing that off of our plate so that for this new year that's coming up, we have that freshness, that that clean, fresh, open page start. And so that's the idea that we're playing with today. The way that we'll do it is by adding in just a little bit of heating stuff occasionally. So things like like core movements and the breath of fire, it's called, is, is something that we'll repeat a couple of times throughout class, as well as the lion's breath to really use the exhale to push what's in us out. And imagine as we're doing that, that that's a clearing of our energy out into, out of our body, out of our field, out of our space to create that space for the new. So that's what we'll be playing with throughout the day today. So with that to lead us forward, let's start off knees coming into the chest. Just simple rocking for a moment. Using the hips into motion. So we'll clear out this hip space first and foremost. Let the arms open out on the floor, left and right. Let the, the feet lift up just a little bit so it's more like a 90 degree angle. And then with an, with an inhale, we tilt the knees partway to one side. And exhale brings us right back with knees back above the hips. Inhale, tilt. And the exhale initiates the contraction of the muscles that returns. If this is way too easy, Lifting the feet up even higher, even up to the point of all the way above, like a straight leg. That would be a way to increase difficulty. Otherwise, just a few good rounds, engaging these parts of the core. Inhale, exhale. Get one more to each side. And then allow the knees to take a simple twist, just dropping over to the left. Try to reconnect the right shoulder to the ground. Maybe even push the right hand a little further to the right. Knees lift up, twist to the second side. Again, reconnect this left shoulder and push the left arm a little further to left. Legs lift back up. 
We'll do bicycles in this way. The right leg straightens up to the sky. Make sure you're taking the moment to pause each time you do this, where the extension up brings some sensation up the hamstrings of stretching. So then that right leg lowers and it circles in. Extension. If you want to grab onto the knee that's bent, that's fine. Otherwise, you can release hands down. Remember, fill the extension each time. Extension. Extension. Sometimes we just move through the angles. Let there be a mini stretch each time. Five. Five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. So I'll left leg to drop long on the floor. Right leg extend up to sky. Grab on wherever it's easy to reach. Thigh, ankle, calf. And wherever the hands are, whether it's thigh or calf, but let there be a moment to have a massage. Using the hands to help release whatever's going on here. Maybe even purposely working a little bit up and down the leg. This calf needs a little bit more, take the time. Otherwise, we'll head to figure four, right ankle to left side. Set up the hug. Allow that right hip a chance to relax. As we uncross the ankle, right leg drops long on the floor, extend left leg up. Take a moment for the hamstring stretch to really be established. And whenever you're ready, you can work on massaging through the backside of this leg. And again, if you notice, know stay here a little bit longer, that's fine. Otherwise, figure four for this half. Crossing both feet, drop to the floor, extend them long. Arms stretch up, stretch up overhead, inhale. Exhale, we're rolling up. Stretch over the toes for a moment. And then we'll use a motion to help us start warming up the shoulders a bit. So lengthening spine back up, the arms come out in front of us. With an exhale, we roll part way back, engage the core, inhale, sit up. Next exhale, arms lift, 
step deep in the hallway, and inhale, return back to start. So exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. Three, two, one. And relax back into the hamstring stretch. So from here, um, go ahead and stay in this for just a moment while I talk through what we're doing next. We're going to be in a boat pose doing the breath of fire. So just a reminder, breath of fire is the one where you exhale and it's, yeah, you're not, you're not um, doing any sort of emphasis to try to get air in. The air is just happening by the, the exhale relaxing. So it's like, it's just the pulse. So we'll do 50 of them at whatever rate I'm going. Um, if you feel like you need to slow down so you're not getting dizzy, that's absolutely fine. So, okay. so I'll count about 50. So, okay. So go ahead and head into boat. And the easy version is fine. Harder is fine. It's up to you. So inhale. Exhale completely first. And begin to pulse. Uh, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale completely, hold without for a moment. Then inhale completely, hold with. And back to normal to the cobbler's pose. Normal breath going in and out again. Yeah, that one gets the core. <laughs> So we'll do things like that where we include breath of fire two or three more times through class today. So each time we do it, we're think of the exhale like like yeah, like pushing the old out. It's like the old stagnant air that's an energy that's been in our body this year. That's what we're relaxing out through that. So now as we're here in cobbler, it can it can be nice to roll through the head a little bit, rocking head to the right shoulder. Left shoulder. Maybe back to the center, even more heavily forward. Beautiful work. Start to rise. The legs will come around behind us. Take a couple of the cat cows. Inhales and exhales.
Okay, we're going to do two lion's breaths. So you take an inhale with rounded head out. And then exhale, stick out the tongue, let it all out. Two more. One. Doesn't work. Take a kneeling plank or a full plank pose, just holding that shape, filling the strength of the body. Okay. Rock the shoulders forward of the fingertips, squeeze the elbows in lower. Now the hands will float above the ground. The toes will stay in contact with the earth, but with our inhale, we're going to lift the back. That's on our back down. Nine. Eight. Seven. Imagine our back represents the past six. Five, four, three, two, one. And we'll head back to a child pose, now stretching out that past. Downward facing dog for a moment. Set the hips up as high as they can get. And then try to drop the heels lower. Allowing the calves to relax. Good. Lowering the knees back to the earth. Come up to a high kneeling spot. Whoa. Like it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we're going to be on our knees for just a little bit. So this will again be another shoulder warm up before we take some stretches. So start with your arms out in front of you. What we'll do is lean part way back. So it's some nice uh, quad activation as one arm takes a back stroke back. And then just lean back forward, back up to start spot. Good. So exhale, lean back circle, inhale forward. Three. Three. Two. Two. One, and one, good. From here, grab your strap. We'll get a nice wide grip. And then we'll slowly circle through the shoulder joint. So if you get stuck and you feel like you have to like bend elbows to get past it, slide wider instead. Slowly forward. If it's too easy, scoot your hands a little closer. Just two more, so nice and slow back. Last one, this one, pause at the tight spot right about here. Breathe. And lower. Then as you rise back up, there will be a new tight spot kind of at a lower angle. And 
and complete it. Good work. Let's take a slow, so plank, Chaturanga. Choose a back bend. It's still fine to be a nice baby cobra if you wish. And then downward facing dog. So now significantly bend the right knee. So left calf is really deep. If you need to even lower the right knee to ground to be able to push that left calf more, you got that up. Okay, switch legs. Now downward facing dog. Again, reset the hips as high as they can get. And then try to relax the heels down so both calves are stretching at the same time. And when you're, whenever you're ready to head up to a forward full top of mat, go right ahead. Next inhale, rise. Down to heart. Right hand on right thigh. Left arm up and over. Rise. Switch. <laughs> yes, it's um right by the water in the next room. That's okay. You're releasing the old. <laughs> releasing the old. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, here we'll take a fierce pose. So big toes close, heels slightly separated. And we're sitting back, let's come up, sweeping by our ears. And let's take just 25 cycles of the breath. Inhale, exhale completely, and pulse. Five, four, three, two, one. Exhale completely, hold without air. Maybe the legs sink a little lower. Inhale, completely hold with air. Normal breath, clasp hand behind the back. Maybe, so you definitely glue torso down to the thighs, but maybe the legs slowly straighten a bit more as the arms swing backwards into the strip. Good, extra emphasis on the inhale for a moment just to make sure we're not too dizzy. Release the hands down. Slide the hand up the shin. The legs are straightening all the way. They weren't already. And drop the hands back to floor. Right leg steps into the past as far back to the mat as I can get. The knee is welcome to lower to the floor. Right knee. We're aiming for right psoas from a hip area. So really set the right hip sinking as deep down as they can get. Hands on floor is fine if you really feel the stretch there. Sometimes I definitely get deeper if I walk up to thigh. Just don't back the hips out at all. Straighten the front leg, half split. This one's one where you can really get into the calf by trying to flex the front foot as much as you can. Maybe even grab with one hand onto the toes to peel the toes backwards. Good. 
The leg slides off to the, the left side, the straight leg, up to the high kneeling spot. Slide the left hand on the left leg, right arm up, reach over. Torso up, hands plant down. This left leg slides back into the half stretch directly behind us. So maybe the right knee lifts as we push into that calf. Lowering right knee down as it lifted. The left leg continues to circle past the right edge of the mat. Good. Push hips to the left. Aiming for IT band area. Okay, leg uncrosses, link pose, hold. Low or straight to down dog. Set the hips up as high as they can get, and then the heels start to lower. Forward in between hands, slightly bend the knees, step walk or jump up to top. Nice. <laughs> so we're here for just a moment. If you want to kind of hug around calves or step on the, the fingers, that's fine. Next inhale, we'll rise. So big toes set up close again, heels slightly separated. Sitting down low, arms swing up by the ears. For 25. Inhale. Exhale completely. Pulse. Four twenty-five. That's how completely pull it out. In helpful width. Maybe legs sink a little lower. Back to normal breath. And clasping hands behind back. Same type of forward fold. Hands release down to the floor, and then we slide our hands up the shins, half lift. Good. Fingertips drop back down. Left leg steps into the pass. Lower the knee. Really deep hip opener for front of hip. So here is fine, or walking hands up to the knees if that helps it. Half split. Maybe grab a hand to the toes. Yep, peel it back in the as deep as the cap will go.
The straight leg goes to the right side, come up high. Like right hand on right leg, left hand up, go over. Rise, plant the hands, right calf stretch directly behind us. Lower the knee, continue to circle for the IT band. Stretch hips, push to the right, knees over to the left. Low or straight to down dog. Same approach, hips high and then heels work on lowering. Traveling up to top of mat. Inhale, rise. And the ducks on the star. So, fierce pose, big toes close, sit back. Let's go lower. And then right arm stretch across the body. Open both arms wide to each side. Left arm across the body. Let's sink lower in the hips if you can. Both arms wide. But the arms are trying to get into the pass. Good. And straighten the left leg, both the right. Either stay with balance or take the twist. That's okay. Deep breaths in. Facing back forward, hands to heart. Deep breath in. Opening the arms to each side. Try to balance in warrior three. And then almost like the arms flapping, they drop a little bit and then they lift into that space behind us, the path. And forward, two. I know it's a hard balance. And three. And then we'll just land warrior one. Arms rise, hips sink low. Opening up warrior two. Left hand comes to back of neck. With the right hand, grab the elbow and then pull the elbow closer to the back wall. Open back up warrior two and then extended side angle. Left elbow to the thigh or shoulder closer to the, to the knee, up arm up and over. And rise. Turn the toes to the long edge of the mat. Fast hands behind the back. 
As we bow forward, start with this shoulder stretch. At any point, if you'd like to release hands, transition more into the legs, that's fine. Releasing the hands. Walk hands to plant at the top of the mat. Turn the body to face with you. So we're popped up on the back toes. Float the left hand up for a twist for a moment. Hand plants down. Step back plank. Optional flow. And traveling up to top of that. Big toes close already, how slightly separated. Big inhale to rise. It's the heart for a moment. Put the hips back fierce. Last heated section. So let's take a right arm stretch again, right arm across the body, I go in with left. Big opening to each side. And hug second side. And open. And the heart. Step hips lower as possible. And straighten, float left. Option to stay or take the twist. Forward, warrior three, flapping back to the future, the past. Two, one, warrior one. Warrior two. Right hand to base of neck. Grab the elbow. So we're leaning toward the back wall. Pull the elbow with us. Warrior two. Extended side angle. Last time, class behind back, turn the toes to this long edge. We're ripple back. Release some hands, dangle for just a moment longer. Walk the hands up to top of the mat. Step back in the plank. Final optional flow. Body warm with the heat. The heat is one way to get rid of the past, but like burning the past. So in these last few minutes, we're heading toward the 
cooling water type of hearing. So we'll have two pigeon poles, right leg raised with floats. Slide the bent knee under. So your preference here, if you want to try to grab for the back leg, that would lead us into a quad stretch with this. Yeah. So enjoy that if you want to for any of the amount of time. Or the sleeping pigeon is also fine. If you wanted kind of a bonus shoulder stretch, there is a left arm threading through option. Yeah, just add a little bit. Sometimes I'll even take the right hand and grab the back toes again, but that's pretty intense. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, so choose today, which have yeah. Lifting the hands. So the recovery pose could either, either be a down dog or a kneeling shake with some nice hip circles. Okay, whenever you're ready for the left knee to slide, slide through pigeon, right ahead. Grabbing the back toe for a moment. And that was no problem. She's in my cross. I do notice that, that it does change things for sure. Yeah, the same side hand. Plus, you kind of almost get the shoulder stretch with it, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It does pull the knees slightly different because the other way kind of pulls it in that way. Bruises. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to drop down sleeping pigeon. Yeah. Put it up here for a moment. You could even use a blanket to add another inch or so if that would help. Head out, down dog or kneeling, have movement through the hips either way. Let's have one last right half stretch. Push back on the right foot. And switching to left. Okay, coming to sit. Let's cradle off the right hip for just a moment to rock it out. 
Yeah, it doesn't have to clasp if it's just more like hold of the knee, hold the foot, that's fine. Okay, so the right will end up in perhaps knee stack, perhaps shin stack, or perhaps cross leg, just whatever allows the bolt sitting bones to easily stay down. Beautiful. And he's sitting on blanket, adds another inch if that helps too. So we're gonna go for the shoulder stretch with the clasp behind. So if you strap if needed, it's gonna be right hand behind base of neck, left hand coming the other way. So head stays tall, the top elbow tries to point up. Sometimes I'll even use my head to push back into the arms. Right tricep and left deltoid, especially stretching. You can stay with the clasp if you want. You could lean forward, which does intensify the shoulder stretch. Or at any point, you could release the arms and just shift it to a hip stretch. So your choice. Raising up, bridle out the leg. Okay, see if the same knee step will work for this side. No pressure if not. Yeah, sometimes it's different. So left hand is the base of neck, this one, and the right hand comes from behind. That one's tight. <laughs> we found something. <laughs> forward, releasing at any point, it's all up to you. Rising up, slide the legs to easy cross leg. Take one more stretch, right, straight arm across the body, hug it in the left. Maybe even drop the left ear to left shoulder. Arms open to each side. And hug the left arm in, drop right ear to right shoulder. Open up each arm, dropping the arms heavy to each side. We'll roll the shoulder, shoulders forward, up, and then just drop. Do that twice more. Roll forward, up, back, drop. One more. From here, if there's any last stretches before Shavasana, feel free to take the last things. Otherwise, at any point, settle to the Shavasana, that feels good. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. 
Inversions are also really good because it's almost like it's flipping us upside down. It's like we're emptying our cup of the past. So even just metaphorically for our intention today, that's a good choice. And take your time, make yourself completely comfortable. Maybe I'll even take on the heat brush of us. Oh, do you're good? Okay. You want it? That's fine too. Okay, no, but I'm good for a few minutes. Letting my exhale be slightly longer than the inhale us with our intention that exhale being letting stuff go but also that's a little trick to bring us into an extremely relaxed state of body it changes the ph of the blood just enough but that's one of the major factors that lulls us off to sleep it's naturally taking this breath without even realizing it So here we utilize that to help us come into a beautiful, deep, relaxed Shavasana.
Begin to deepen the inhales, the exhales. Introduce little movements to the body. Stretching out in ways that feel good. Just enjoying these last couple of breaths here. The body returns. up to a comfortable seated space when you're ready. Hands to heart, we reconnect with our intention, remembering to clear out the old, to create space for the new. So much of our society loves the growth and the, the life part. But we don't like the death and the release and the clearing off stuff from our plate. So this, this day, this week, this next phase is a release to prepare for the new that's up ahead. With this to lead us forward, we'll wrap up the time we shared together with the sound of Om. Do you now? Om. Om. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste. Mm -hmm.